welcome to this video. I know I promised this a long time ago, but we can finally start work on the backbone part of the chassis. I've got all the repair sections that I need, so we can start right away. Now what you can see here is the backbone part of the chassis. This is the rear of the chassis and this is the front. And I've turned the chassis upside down. So this is the bottom of the chassis, which is the section that's rusted. And I've uh, clipped on these repair sections to show you what I'll need to replace. You can see the sections only reach to about halfway here. This is because the original metal beyond this point is still very good. I'm going to start at the back of the chassis because once I cut out this section I still have all the other sections to use as a reference point for the, di for the dimensions. So now I've completely measured everything and marked everything out. I started with this repair section because I have to make sure I have enough metal left on the end of this section to reach the front of the chassis. So I marked this out first and I measured from the end of this section to the back. And now I know where this section needs to be. I've also placed my chassis on a poured concrete floor that's completely level and I've put some pieces of wood between the ground and the chassis to space everything out. This way I know my chassis is completely level and I'm sure it won't warp or distort when I cut everything out and weld the new pieces in. So I've cut some holes in the chassis to get my jigsaw in and now I'm going to cut the part out. So I've cut the top edge, now I'm going to do the bottom one. So as you can see, I've cut out the complete section of rusted metal. This is it. It's not too bad, but it isn't pretty either. So while I was replacing it, I might as well replace everything. On the top everything fits very nicely and I've cut the bottom straight as well. The repair section is a bit too wide on the top but I knew this was coming so I'm going to cut this repair section down the middle and I can weld this side in first and I can weld the flange on the inside because I have access to that. Then I'll weld in the other pieces, then I can trim the bottom section of my hole to fit the repair section. But before I'm going to start welding everything in place, there are a couple of things that I need to do. The first thing is now that I have access to the inside of the chassis, I'm going to clean off all the rust on the inside and paint it. The second thing I want to do is this. You can see that this has been warped before so as I do this everything's straight again but it won't stay that way. Now this is my method of how I'm going to fix this. You can see uh, I've got a piece of angle iron here and I've clamped this to the chassis and this has made sure that this piece of metal is nice and straight again. Now. I've drilled some holes in the angle iron and now I'm going to do the same in the chassis and then I'm going to rivet the chassis to the piece of angle iron. This will make sure that this piece of metal is straight again when I'm going to weld in my repair section. Afterwards when everything is welded I can just drill out the rivets from the angle iron and weld these holes back closed again. You can see I've riveted this piece of angle iron to the chassis and I'm not sure if you can see this on video but this line is really really straight so my plan has worked. So now I'm going to use some clamps and some magnets to make sure this is in place then I'm going to double check that all the dimensions are okay and then I'll tack it in place and we'll go from there. I've used some magnets to attach and align the repair section that I want to weld in. You have to remember that the only welds that will be final 
on this repair section will be the welds on the back side and on the bottom because all of the other surrounding panels will be replaced in the near future. I'm not sure if you can see it on video but I have cut some slots here and here. This is because this section is the next section that needs to be replaced. So I've already cut these slots because it will be much easier to get my saw in there and start cutting. So now it's time to start welding this in. But first I'll have to degrease it a little bit because I've used some oils on this repair section to stop it rusting. These are very very small tags, but it's just enough to keep the panel in place. I'm going to, going to do some more on the other side, but as you might be able to see, my panel has already moved a little bit because of the heat, so I'm going to put it back into place and continue my tacking. So I'm going to make the second part of the repair section fit before I'm going to weld everything and before I'm going to weld these flanges on the inside. I'll do this because if there's a problem I can easily cut through these tags and remove this section if I want to. I don't think it'll be necessary but better safe than sorry. I've trimmed the repair section and the hole to make everything fit. This is as good as I'm going to get it. So the thing to do next is to remove this repair section and to weld these flanges on the inside. So this is the joint that I have to weld from the inside. You can understand that once everything's covered on the outside with the repair panels that I won't be able to reach this joint. And if I don't weld this, this will be the perfect place for a crack to start forming. So all the joints are tacked, um, nothing has warped and the fit's still very good. The next thing to do is to finalize a couple of joints. So I'm going to have to completely weld this joint, this joint and those two joints on the rear. Welding these final joints, I'm going to have to stitch weld these. This means that I'm going to weld a couple of centimeters at a time. So I'm going to start to do a couple of centimeters here, then I'm going to do a couple of centimeters here. And um, after a couple of stitches I'm going to let this panel cool down so that uh, the chassis doesn't get too hot and it won't sag or warp. finished welding in the complete panel. This is taking me a couple of hours because TIG welding is very slow but by TIG welding I can minimize the heat input and this has caused uh, the panel not to warp so everything is very straight and I'm very pleased with this result. Now I'm going to take this bracing off and I'm hoping that by bracing this and welding this afterwards that this had made sure that this panel would be straight again but chances are that if I drill out the rivets, the panel will just uh, pop in again. This level is completely straight, so we're going to find out if it worked. Well, it did work. It's not 100% perfect, but I think it's about 99% straight and it was bulging in and bulging out when we started, so this is definitely a success story. There are a couple of things that I still have to do on this side of the chassis. Firstly, I have to fill in all of these holes by welding, and secondly, I'm going to grind all these welds flat with my angle grinder. That way you can't see any of the joints between the pieces of sheet metal. So I filled in all of these holes, and I was a little bit worried that while I was filling these holes, um, the heat would concentrate so much on one spot that the panel would just pop back out and bulge out a little bit. But while the panel was still hot from welding, 
I just hit it with a hammer and it shrunk back flat, so um, this is still flat, I'm very pleased with that. So to recap this method of repair, so because this was the first uh, repair panel that I was going to weld into the chassis, it was a little bit of trial and error. But all in all, I think it's a very good method. It may be slow, but this ensures a good fit. And this also makes sure that the panel doesn't warp. So the chassis remains very straight. The thing I'm going to do next is removing this section of the chassis. I'm not going to film this because you've already seen how it works when I remove this section. So it's just the same process. Now you're able to see that I've cut out the hole to fit the repair sections. The thing to do next is to clean off all the rust on the inside of the chassis. I've cleaned off most of the rust uh, from the other side, but this access hole is much deeper than the hole on this side, so access is a lot better. Now while the outside of the chassis is pretty rusted, the inside is just a little bit of surface rust, so it shouldn't be that much of a problem. So I've tried to remove as much of the rust as I could by using a wire brush, some 40 grit sandpaper and a wire reel on an angle grinder. Now I recommend using the wire reels with the knotted ends because these are the most effective. After that I vacuumed it out and degreased it with some acetone. The thing I'm going to do next is using this. This is FE123 rust converter that I got from rust.co.uk. When I took the lid off a couple of minutes it was completely orange, but after a little bit of stirring it turned out white. Now this is meant to be uh, worked in some rusted surfaces with a brush, then it should sit for 20 minutes to half an hour, and then the rusted surfaces should have converted to something that doesn't react anymore and it should turn black. After that it's ready to be painted over. So I'm just going to use this on the rusted surfaces. So as you can see the places that had rust were turned black and the places that didn't have rust were turned white. So there wasn't as much rust on this plate as I thought there was. I was expecting quite a lot from this product because it had already won the Practical Classics magazine um, rust converter comparison and it didn't disappoint, it worked quite well. It has been two hours since I painted on the second coat in the top corners and I'm much more impressed with the finish now than I was a couple of hours ago because it has really gone rock solid. This is just a plate that I had lying around that I put some of the rust converter on. Um, as you can see the rusted surfaces have turned black. I'm going to see how tough the coating is with my screwdriver. As you can see, I actually really can't break the surface. It's a lot tougher than I imagined, so I'm very pleased with this coating, with this rust converter. Because um, this shouldn't be left bare and this coating is meant to be overpainted by a rust protection paint. But as you can see, it'll hold up for a couple of weeks or months until you get back to painting it. I've welded the inside flange like I did on the other side. Now I'm going to try and fit this repair section. So everything has been clamped to make sure it doesn't move. Now I'm going to tack it. So everything has been tacked into place, now I'm going to let it cool down a little bit and then we'll start stitch welding. So now it's time to weld this section into place. I've already tacked this piece in here and I've welded the inside lip on the inside of the chassis to the other replacement section. I made this piece to fit and it's held in with these magnets right now. So now I'm going to tack this and then um, I'm going to completely weld it. The entire chassis has been welded, so the only thing to do now is to mark the top of the chassis because uh, this 
should be a 3 degree angle to tilt the front suspension. So I'm just going to use the top part of the chassis to mark this out and then I'm going to cut this flange off and I'm going to connect this line with this line and then I should have a 3 degree angle. So now this line is marked and now I can remove this part of the chassis but before I'm going to do that I'm going to remove all of the excess welds on these three repair sections that I've already welded in. The reason I'm doing this is because once this section is off I'm going to paint the inside. If I do this afterwards the inside will be painted and this can create a lot of heat which, which can cause uh, the paint to blister. So I'm going to do this now and uh, then I'm going to take this section off. So as you can see I've ground off all of the excess welds of the three repair panels that I've already welded in. Now it's time to remove this section of the chassis and weld in the last of the repair panels. Once that's finished I'll come back to you and I'll show you what we'll need to do to finish off this section. I've cut out the final section of the backbone which needed to be replaced. Now that this side is off we have access to the inside of the chassis and on the inside of this side of the chassis I've drilled 7 new holes for the mounting of the throttle paddle. Now I've done this because on a Series 1 Europa the seats are not adjustable. The only thing that is adjustable are the pedals. You can uh, move them forwards and backwards a little bit, but because I'm quite short, I would need to have the pedals a little bit closer to the seat. So now I've made uh, the mounting holes for the throttle pedal, then I have 4 more inches that I can move them uh, closer towards the seat. So it can accommodate me and even uh, my girlfriend if she would like to drive it. So um, I've drilled all the holes and I've made sure that the original bracket fits on every one of these holes that I can move them forwards and backwards. Now the only thing that I need to do is to weld on nuts on the inside of the chassis where the bolts can thread into from the outside. I've put some bolts through the holes and I've threaded on a nut so that it sits to the chassis. This will make sure that um, the nut is centered on the hole. So the only thing that I have to do now is to weld these in place. I've welded all the nuts to the inside of the chassis and then I made some uh, little balls of some masking tape and I've put these inside the nuts to prevent paint come going onto the threads. Next I've tried to remove as much of the rust as I could on the inside of the chassis and I've put some uh, rust converter on some places with a lot of rust. Now I'm going to paint the inside of the chassis as much as I can. So everything apart from a little edge around all the welding seams that still need to be welded because the paint will burn off on those places anyway. So I can paint this entire side and the inside here with epoxy mastic uh, anti-rust paint from rust.co.uk once that's dried I'm going to weld in the final panel and then I'm going to paint all the places that I couldn't paint before with uh, access to the front hole and the hole on top of the backbone so I hope I can reach everything then so now I'm going to mix the epoxy mastic paint and then I'll have to mix it for 10 minutes before I can start painting so this will be my second attempt to mix the paint I tried pouring yesterday but one is very runny and one is very viscous and I just couldn't get the exact amount because you need a 1 to 1 ratio in volume of both uh, components of paint. I really couldn't match the same um, volume so what I've done is I went to the pharmacist and I got some of these very big syringes so I'm hoping that this will be the trick to get um, the exact amount of volume missing. I'm hoping it will work. Then I'll have to mix it for 10 minutes before I can paint, but I'll set up the cameras in between, so um, I'll catch back up with you once we start painting. I 
I've also used some uh, cellophane tape, like wrapping, um, to put over the cans before I put the lid back on. This will prevent um, the lid from uh, sticking to the can. So the paint's mixed, I've degreased everything. This is the panel that goes on this side. And I'm only and I'm going to paint the inside as well because it just means that there's less to paint when this is well done. I'm going to start by painting this so if anything's wrong with the paint as it was yesterday, I can remove it without sticking my head in the tunnel. So um Let's try painting. It's very thick. There's a little bit of thinner um, included, but I think it will work okay. I don't think I have enough to do everything, but I will see how far we'll get. If necessary, I'll um, make some more paint. But let's try. So I've covered everything that I need to be painted on this panel, so um, I'm going to put this on the side, let it go tacky, when it gets tacky I'll put on a second coat really quick, but um, first I want to get the inside of the chassis painted, because that's the most difficult part. So the inside of the chassis here has already been painted. I've got some paint on my arms and on my gloves, but it's okay. Um, now I'm going to paint this, and then I hope that will be tacky, so I can do a second coat on that. So I've put a second coat on the inside of this panel and it's very thick paint but it brushes on well. You can see brush strokes but it won't matter on the inside. Um, I think it will be very tough and will provide good rust protection but um, we'll see when it tries. So now I'm going to get my head back inside the tunnel of the chassis and paint that and I'll put this on the side to dry it. paint has dried and I've checked inside and on all the panels and the paint has covered everything. 
what you can see here is I've used some levels to make sure the chassis is completely straight. I have a clamp on here because um, when I removed this side a lot of forces came free because um, it's under tension and uh, when I cut this part off this part flexed a little bit that way so I've put a clamp on here um, I've put some levels on the chassis to make sure everything's straight and square I know that it was square before I started I know the floor is square I know that these pieces are square because I checked everything once uh, these original pieces were still on here so now it's just uh, a matter to make sure everything stays square the last repair piece has been trimmed to measure so everything fits I've also used both the levels to check that everything is uh, straight and level in all the correct planes. I've also used um, this long level to make sure that everything is straight on the side and on the top. So now I'm just going to tack this last piece in place and then um, I'll completely weld it. The welding of the last repair section has been completed. Um, the only thing that needs to be welded is this top seam. So I've put the clamp on this side and you can see uh, it's completely straight and level. And now I'll be able to weld in this direction. Once this seam will be completely welded and I remove the clamp, the chassis should stay like this. Among the smaller jobs that still need to be done before the, the backbone is completely finished is removing these flanges. There's one on this side and one on the other side. Uh, we remove this part of the flange when we cut out uh, the rust piece of the chassis. This was the original way to mount the front T-section to the backbone and it would, it would have just been welded along this edge to the T-section but it wasn't an efficient way because um, A. There are a lot of chassis that are cracked among the bottom here but Series 1 chassis don't have that because there's a striking plate on the bottom. The second reason is because it's only welded on this edge, there's a lot of slop in here and this piece of plate could move because there's nothing holding the joint of the backbone to the T-section. So all the movement in this flange would have just been slop between the backbone so the rear suspension and the front suspension. You can also see this line that I've scribed on this metal. You can see that this line isn't straight. Um, it's leaning 3 degrees towards the back of the chassis. Um, this was designed that way to make uh, the front suspension work. So I'm just going to cut the flange off and the access and repair sections here and on the other side as well. I'm not going to cut this flange off right here because um, the face of the front T-section would sit against this side of this flange and well if I cut this off I'm going to lose a little bit of uh, metal here and it will be uh, difficult to weld some extra metal on there so I'm going to fold this edge over then I'm going to Rescribe my line and then I'm going to cut it and uh, This way I'm not going to lose the metal in the corner here Now it's time to scribe our line again. I know that the top line is correct because I transferred this from um, the original chassis section There's also a mark on this side That indicates the front side of the flange. So I'm going to use this mark and my top line to scribe uh, my 3 degree angle. So there's a little bit of a hole here in the split between this top piece and the flange that I need to cut. So I'm just going to fill in this hole. So um, once I've cut it, it's a nice uh, one part piece. Cut 
all the edges off and I straighten it with a file. As you can see, it's very straight. Now I'll just have to cut the top off. But before I'm going to turn the chassis upside down, I'll finish this off first. So I don't have to uh, turn the chassis on its side again. What you see here is a bracket that holds in um, a nut for the handbrake assembly and I had to cut this top side off to replace this side of the chassis. So what I'm going to do now is just clean off this rust and this paint a little bit and I'll just weld this back onto the new repair panel. Top side is cut off and trimmed. It's completely straight. What I'm doing now is I'm trying to map out the position of the holes for the brake and the clutch pedal. I've calculated the positions of these holes by using the uh, original bottom section of the chassis. They don't match up because um, there's a little bit of overlap so I've just measured this and then I've transferred this to uh, the new chassis section. What I'm doing now is because I made extra mounting holes for um, the throttle pedal, I now need to figure out what's the relation between the bottom mounting and the top mounting so I can uh, make the new bottom mountings in relation to uh, the new top mountings. This way um, the throttle will be uh, positioned always in the exact same way than if it would have been mounted on the original mounting holes. So now I know the relation between the rear mounting bolt for the throttle pedal and the mounting holes for the brake and the clutch pedal. So now I'll move this closer towards the driver and then I'll scribe out the new lines. So now all the holes are drilled. You can see these are the three original holes and these are the three new holes. So I've got some more adjustment. The final thing that I need to do is I need to deburr the back side of these holes and I'll do that with a file from the inside of the chassis. All of the metal work on the backboard part of the chassis is completely finished. One small thing that I did is I've drilled some holes and welded some um, M6 nuts on here and a couple on the rear part of the chassis. I did this to get a good ground for the electrical system. What I need to do now is to paint the rest of the inside of the backbone that I couldn't paint before. So I'll paint the inside, then I'll take the chassis outside remove all the surface rust that's still on here, then I'll completely paint the rear Y section and the background part of the chassis, then we'll get it back down here and I'll show you how it looks. So my chassis is back in my workshop after it's been painted. I started off by removing as much of the rust as I could with a knotted wire wheel on my angle grinder and I went at it for a couple of hours. Once I removed as much of the rust as I could with various wire reels, and trammels and angle grinders. Then I had to hang the chassis from the ceiling. That way I could apply the paint to all surfaces of the chassis without the chassis touching any stands. The first thing that I did is to apply a rust converter into all of the nooks and crannies and along the surface where there was a little bit of some brown deposits that I couldn't remove with my wire wheel. So I applied all the rust converter and let it sit for a while, let it dry, let it convert all of the rust. Then I applied two layers of the epoxy mastic paint. I used various brushes and rollers to get an even surface as much as I could. But you can see that it's a little blotchy and you can see the brush and the, the roller marks. But it doesn't really matter because I'll have to overpaint this anyway because the epoxy mastic is not UV proof. As you can see, the front T-section hasn't been mounted yet, so once the front T-section has been welded to the rest of the chassis, I'll paint that section with two layers of epoxy mastic. So this is the end of this video, I know it's been a long video and it's been a long job, but once I see this result and I come down to my workshop and I see this, I don't have the feeling anymore that I'm still tearing down the car, but I'm slowly building something up and 
this gives me the little bit of extra motivation that I need to get this finished as soon as possible. If you have any questions or comments about this or about something else, just leave a comment below or send me an email through my website. I always answer my emails, so don't be afraid to ask anything. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, that way you won't miss any of my next videos. And you can also visit my blog to get some extra pictures and some more explanation about the entire process. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I'll see you next time. Goodbye.